We're back in the Senate chambers with Senate President Andy Gardner and House Speaker Steve Crisofulli. Mr. President, uh, another uh, item in the Work Plan 2015 has to do with economic independence for people with unique abilities. Uh, and it's really kind of a full plan as to how we address that in the state of Florida and open up new opportunities there. I know that this is an issue that's near and dear to you, and you've been working on it for a couple of three years. And now that you're president and with the cooperation of the House, this is going to be a centerpiece. Mm -hmm. Describe what the essence is you're trying to achieve. Well, I, number one, we're very grateful to the House and to the Speaker. It, it, it was not a, a, a tough sell to do this. And, and to your point, um, when John Thrasher was here, uh, Senator Thrasher, now President Thrasher, we kind of had a vision of sort of a four-stage process. And, and it was really based on the fact that you have a lot of individuals, some will say with disabilities, but really unique abilities that are turning 19 or 20 years old and they really have very few options. And we wanted to do everything we could to try to address that. We've done a, a few things over the last couple of years, but to have it on the joint agenda and really, probably for the first time, really focus on individuals with unique abilities, um, that's pretty special. And uh, there are a couple things on there. One that uh, really is starting to move that's kind of that next stage on the education front is the post-secondary options for individuals with unique abilities where they can go to a UCF or an FIU or UNF and actually learn a trade and, and go and, and live independently. So there, and that hasn't been there as a very specific route, has right. it? No, there's two programs. There's the University of North Florida and FIU that have uh, programs that they're on their own, but nothing's ever been put a stamp of approval from the state and funded by the state. Okay. And it's all part of, for me, and, and the speaker's been so gracious on this, whenever a family is put on that journey, whether it's at birth or a child is diagnosed later, the parent has 20 or 30 options for their child. If you follow this path, this is where they can go. They can do vocational work. They can do higher ed, and it just ties very well into the other piece of our agenda, which is the accountability, the education piece, because it's all part of what uh, John Thrasher and I have tried to do over the last couple of years, and I'm term limited out, and uh, it's very special to, to, to really put the spotlight on it for, for a little bit. Mr. Speaker, you want to make any comment about it? Yeah, well, you know, listen, the, the president's been a leader on this issue, and, and we're honored to, to work with him on the House side to accomplish uh, some of these goals. I don't think uh, by any means this is the extent of, of the end of it. You know, I think this needs to be a commitment that's made for uh, for many years to come, and we look forward to, to being there at the foundational level of working on this. Let's continue on, uh, since this comes really under the general umbrella, policy-wise of education. I know that's another major area of concern in your work plan. Um, Mr. Speaker, let's just go to you here. Um, you, the two of you list several different policy initiatives under the umbrella of education. Let's just jump in. The word accountability kind of came out just a minute ago. Let me just ask you about this, though. You, a lot of people associate accountability, okay, and sometimes not positively, with testing. Uh, people are saying their children are over-tested and, and so forth. When you think of accountability, what, what comes to your mind? What do you want to see happen? I think it's, it's a combination of, of what's being taught and who's teaching it. And, um, you know, together there's a combination of success that you can bring from accountability. And, and for me, you know, to speak to you right now as a parent and a father of two kids in education and public education in our state, uh, it's important for me to know that the tools are in place um, to measure my, my children's success in the classroom. And I want to make sure that uh, they're receiving the information they need to be successful uh, with, a, with an education that, that is important for the future of, of, of you know, their lives. So, you know, to understand that, that we're competing on a global uh, map now versus, you know, with our, our friends to the north and bordering states, um, you know, we need to continue to look at ways to raise the bar, challenge that next generation, and certainly there's no other way to do it than, than by testing. But having said that, there's, there's some things that we can do. Um, there's certainly been some, 
some duplicative testing that takes place from the district level. Some, there's some overlap even at the state level with some, some tests that maybe don't need to take place because they're, they're being tested a year before uh, on the same, you know, same information. So, you know, we need to step back and, and assess some of those things, and this is an opportunity to do that in this year's work plan. Uh, Mr. President, uh, education is always a big budget issue, and I know you two have undoubtedly talked about funding K through 12 and also higher education. Uh, where does that sit? Well, part of our, uh, our hope is, again, it, you have to let it work through the budget process, is um, be very supportive of an increase in, in education funding, whether it's through FEFP, uh, PICO. I mean, there's a whole number of areas that, that I think we both agree need to be addressed, and um, that's part of the joint agenda. I would just also like to, if I could, yeah. add just on the accountability piece, mm -hmm. you know, I think you're starting to see both chambers start to have that discussion about testing, and there's probably going to be some ideas, uh, but one thing that we're not going to walk away from is that true accountability to be able to know what a child learns during a school year and somebody to be held accountable for that. Um, we can have the dialogue about are there too many tests or is there this or that, but there are those that just say no testing at all, leave us alone. Um, but I think what we've proven here in the state of Florida is we have very measurable increases every step of the way across the spectrum of children learning and, and, and doing a good job, and we're not going to walk away from that. So, you know, it all starts to play together. Mr. Speaker, uh, last question on education. Uh, for a long time, there was almost a singular fo focus on K through 12, but now higher education mm -hmm. is really beginning to uh, be looked at by policymakers, uh, trying to make sure that we're we're going in the right direction and we're focused correctly and funded correctly. What uh, will the bodies be looking at this year uh, when it comes to higher education? Well, certainly the, the conversations of, of more with regard to performance of our universities and understanding that um, you know they need to turn out a product and we're working to develop those those programs and and recognize that you know we need to continue to do more there as far as you know raising the bar and, and challenging our universities to you know get to levels that are more competitive at a, at a higher degree across this country so we're you know we're certainly interested in having those conversations it's obviously early in the process and and the committee structure will will talk about that but you know to another point uh, with regard to the education side of things you know we're also interested in folks that aren't coming out of high school and going and getting a four-year degree and and to have more uh, with regard to vocational and technical learning opportunities is important to to us and and the governor has come out and been supportive of that so we're also looking at that aspect as well good let me go to some issues if possible unless you all want to say anything else about your plan you let me just go through several that are not in the plan that uh, have nevertheless come up for discussion. The state's gambling pact with the Seminole tribe will expire fairly soon, and uh, a lot of speculation about whether or not it will be renewed and what will happen if it's not. Mr. President, uh, your comment about where we are with that and whether or not it's absolutely necessary to renew the pact with the Seminole, since I think, do we get... Two hundred and fifty million dollars out of that a year. Or? Uh, it depends. The, the the number. Uh, keep in mind the compact's not going away. Going away. Okay. There's a uh, expiration on a, a certain portion of the compact. Is, okay. Goes away, which is about 130, 140 million dollars. Okay. The reality is, um, we are not anticipating that money over our three-year outlook. I mean, we, we're anticipating it going away. Okay. Um, so we're not even budgeting for it, and I don't think the governor did. I, I, so when you think of it in that term, then it, it sort of changes the dynamic. I don't know if there's a, an agreement to be had. I have some very strong personal views of gaming. Um, but we'll let the members kind of work through it and see if there can be something done. But at least for us, we're not anticipating it being there anytime soon. Mr. Speaker, could that issue... Uh, the Seminole Compact issue stimulate a wider uh, discussion of gambling? It could. Um, you know, certainly there are members that have an interest in, in the issue. We've had an opportunity for, you know, basically four and a half years now to see what that portion of the compact means for Florida. And, you know, whether we want to admit it or not, we're, you know, we've made ourselves the fourth largest gaming state in the country. 
Um, so for me, I'm kind of agnostic to the to the gambling part of it, but I recognize that if we're going to continue to do this, the regulatory side of things is is very important, and I think building more on that structure is something that, that we need to be focused on first and foremost. Another big issue, and it's been a big issue for several years, is uh, whether or not Florida will uh, in any way expand the Medicaid program to receive more federal dollars, expand the pool of people uh, eligible for it. Um, and uh, Mr. Speaker, I know that the House has been rather reluctant to expand it at all and uh, for various reasons. Um, also a related issue in there is the uh, program uh, 2.2 billion they call it the LIP program, low income pool program that funds a lot of hospitals to take care of indigents. How about helping educate our our audience about some of these issues? I know they're big. I'm not sure we're going to have time. time. <laughs> <laughs> so we probably don't, separate, but so. the question is, is there a chance that there will be serious consideration given to uh, Medicaid expansion and increasing the pool of indigents perhaps that are eligible for Medicaid. And I'll start with you, Mr. President. Well, we, we've been consistent on the, on the Senate side that, you know, we're open to any dialogue. Um, you know, it, it, you know, we understand that there's dynamics that go above and beyond uh, a simple solution. Uh, we were joking about how complex it, it really is. Uh, in my real life, I work for a hospital and healthcare, and it is completely, the financing of it is, is very, very difficult on everybody. Certainly the, the lip pool issue and, and the intergovernmental transfers, and maybe you can't do that anymore if the federal government truly is gonna say that, that's a huge number. And um, you, know, you have to decide, are you gonna try to backfill that with general revenue, which again, cuts into tax cuts, it cuts into education, it's across the board. So from our standpoint, you know, we just kind of believe, let's put everything on the table. Let's look and see if there's options on, on the Healthy Florida Works, which has been proposed. I don't know what the final answer is. We'll let the members decide, but, but we certainly want to have that discussion. We're going to have to come back and discuss this again. Yeah, <laughs> Mr. President, Mr. Speaker, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.